We're going to talk all things Give Center with Kendall Stiles today on GC Conversations. Hello and welcome once again to GC Conversations, our weekly show where we bring in all things Georgia College in Baldwin County. I'm your host, Wendell Staten. Today we've got a real special treat. We're joined by Kendall Stiles, Director of the Give Center here at Georgia College. Kendall, thanks for being here. Thanks, Wendell. Thanks for the invitation. All right. Well, we're going to talk about the Give Center and, uh, and, and talk, talk about all the great things that are going on. As our folks see people volunteering out in the community, they can point directly to you for that. Okay. But before we do that, tell us a little bit about Kendall Stiles. Right. Well, uh, I actually went to Appalachian State University. Okay. I uh, went and got my undergrad there in uh, elementary education, and then I decided to go back and get my master's in leadership in higher education. And I moved down to Milledgeville, Georgia in uh, 94 and thought I was going to be here for nine months, and it's 18 years later, <laughs> and so you just sometimes never know. So. You know, I hear that a lot, and that's <laughs> a great story. That's one of the great things about our community is people get here, and they absolutely yeah. love it. They don't leave. Exactly. So we're, we're glad you're here. Well, thank you. I'm glad to yeah. be here. So uh, did you do now? Did you do your graduate work here? No. Oh, okay. Both. Yeah, I didn't. Like, when I first, I did my work, uh, my graduate or undergraduate at Appalachian State, and then I did my graduate also at Appalachian oh, State. Oh, okay. And went to a conference in Atlanta, looked for jobs, and then saw this one, never heard of Millersville or Georgia College, okay. and then just thought, well, you need to get some experience. Right. You've always heard you got to go away, go away to come back That's home, right. and that yeah. was my plan. I'm right. still trying to get back home days, <laughs> but I have grown to love Millersville and Georgia College. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you got here, was this was it the Give Center at that time? Is that no. what brought you here? No. Actually, okay. I got uh, my first job was in student activities, okay. and I was doing SGA, and I was doing what's called CAB now, leadership, homecoming, more of the activities to side okay. of it. And uh, like I said, it was nine months position, and so I went home for the summer. I didn't have a job, and oh. so I went home my first summer. Then I came back, and then after our second year, they was able enough, which was funny. I did uh, Hooting the Blowfish. Yeah. He was. They were my first con. Concert, and okay. we made enough money to pay my salary okay. for the summer. And so after that, it just kind of worked into 12 months. Okay. So I was here about a year and a half, and I met a young lady named Kate Van Campford, who was a student. Gotcha. And she really enjoyed service, and that's something that I enjoy too. And so we just started adding service kind of things to different of our student activities. And we found out that our students were actually really more involved in that than some of the other activities we were doing. Okay. So it just kind of grew out of the interest and the passion of the students. And then about two years later, the gift center actually was created and then we broke kind of off into a different direction well so, good okay well yeah. all right now let's go back through that and okay. first of all what is the this GIVE mm -hmm. is that an acronym or it, is it just no it's an acronym okay tell us what that is and it stands for Georgia College and State University involved in volunteer efforts okay and so right. yeah we took it from the Gators uh, okay. so we found that but yeah so that's the acronym and so pretty much we're the volunteer clearinghouse on campus okay and so when students want to come in and volunteer they start with our office all right so so the uh, uh, going back to the start of this. Mm -hmm. So Kate Van Camper, who's yes. a student, and you're you're doing your normal SGA stuff, right. your programming, this, that, and the other. She comes into your office one day, and you didn't bring the pink pink no, box the, today. The red basket. Well, the no, red I basket. Didn't, Excuse me. Exactly. Tell me about that. Tell well, me. About, talk about the red basket. Well, if you've seen uh, at Michaels or Walmart, the little red basket. Okay. Um, I don't really know where we got our basket from, but uh, Kate would sit in my office in a very small office, and I sat at a desk, and she'd sit in the floor, right. and she had this red basket, and we'd go through the newspaper, we'd go through the phone book, and we would just see, oh, there's Habitat, there's Big Brothers, Big Sisters, or somebody's house burned down, or right. this child needs a kidney, or, you know, different things of that nature, okay. and that's kind of how we got started, and then we just started plugging into some of the local agencies that we had here. First couple were Oconee Prevention Resource Council, which does Red Ribbon Week, mm -hmm. and the youth um, program in the summer, Big Brothers, Big Sister, and Habitat. Those were probably our three strongest ones that we started with. And what, when was this? 19 what? This would be a 95, okay. 95 ish. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. all right. And so, so at this point, you're still doing, still doing the SGA stuff and, right. and, and uh, programming. Exactly. And then this sounds like it gradually started building mm -hmm. right. to where exactly. you said. Uh, well, and we got to a point, and then we were doing some change with student activities and all. Our activities director left. Okay. And so it was kind of one of those moments, did I want to kind of maybe go and move up the ladder? Right. And so talked to Dr. Harshbarger and mm -hmm. just different things and told him I'd really like to try this arm, but we were at the point that I couldn't do both anymore. Okay. And we you know, with him, the support of him and then Dr. Rosemary DePaula, who was right. the president at the time, 
you know, either believed in me or understood enough about the right. area that we needed to do. And so they let us kind of develop now what 15 years later, yeah. what people know as of the gift center. And I believe yeah. you were telling me that the president, when you start this mm -hmm. uh, 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 endeavor, they right. have to sign off on a well, national. they don't Come have to it just that? to have an office, but if oh, okay. you want to be part of a national organization called Campus Compact, which right. is a resource, and it is for universities all over the nation, that the only way your university can become a member is the president of the university has to sign off. Okay. No matter if everybody else wants it and we think it's good unless they have that they really believe in. And so Kate, who was a student at the time, right. she actually went in without me. I okay. knew she was going, but yeah, she yeah. went by herself and went in and talked to Dr. DePaul. Okay. and got her more or less to sign the dotted line, you okay. know, and yeah. so that, so ever since then, we've always had the support of the administration and thing, which right. has been really very, very helpful in the things that we're doing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so now we're, we're, uh, uh, you've been here a couple of, couple of three years. You start into this. This is really before the internet and all, and, and, oh, yeah. and we're, so, so how did, how did you get the folks coming in there? What, the word of mouth, what it do we got here? It was word of mouth, some PR, and then it was just events that we had, you know, and uh -huh. somebody would come in and say, hey, Kendall, I want to volunteer. What do you like to do, Wendell? I like right. to work with animals. Okay, well, we have ARF down the street. Go down there and good luck. I mean, that was okay. kind of the gist of it. it was, we right. just kind of, if we knew of things or we'd try to find them. And now, if you've been in the Give Center recently, it's a whole nother. Yeah. It's a whole, as somebody says, we're a well-oiled machine. Some days I don't know how well-oiled we are, but we are a machine almost. Right, right. As far as because we do so much things now with technology, yeah. background checks, references, sure. and things of that nature. Yeah, because that, that whole, the whole volunteer experience has changed. It and, sure and, and has. Uh, and that's part of it. That mm -hmm. There are there is more screening. And, exactly. You know, 20, 30 years ago, that really wasn't right. part of talk about that. Well, it is because you want to be careful of who you're that's sending. Right. You know, sure. and a lot of students, when we first come in and mention the background check, they start doing this little crazy number, right. you know, and you can tell that they probably have done something that maybe they're not uh, uh, proud of, maybe not yeah. terrible, yeah. but uh, usually it's speeding tickets. Right, and stuff like yeah, that. yeah, maybe yeah. DUI here or there, right. but usually it's speeding tickets. And so what we tell them is don't worry about that. Go ahead and put on your paperwork because it will come up. Right, yeah. And then the agencies will tell you if it's a problem. As far as the gift center, we don't really do anything with background right, checks. Okay. We're just kind of that clearinghouse. Gotcha. And then when you say, when you say I want to go to Big Brothers, right. Big Sisters, we send it to them and then they will decide, can this person work with us or not? And so oh. they actually have that decision. Okay, yeah. okay. And as I tell people, I usually use the, far, like, you know, if you've got a DUI, you probably aren't driving a school bus. Right, you know? right. Yeah. Uh, if you're a child molester, you're probably not working with young children. You know, right, so we use okay. the really, you know, broad <laughs> ones. But just because you've done something that maybe, you know, like a speeding ticket or something, it's very seldom is going to keep you from volunteering. Right. It may just limit you in the area that yeah. you would like to do. Well, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to uh, tell folks out there how to get involved with the Give Center. Okay. And we'll talk about all the volunteer hours and the economic impact that that has here okay. in our, our community when we come back. Sure. Okay. Be, great. be right back on GC Conversations with Kendall Stiles. When I was younger, I didn't want to admit I had a serious disease. Because of my diabetes, I lost the sight in my left eye. Misconceptions continue to surround this monster public health issue, but the simple truth is, diabetes can often be prevented and complications avoided. You're not alone. Understand the realities of diabetes and know that you can manage it and lead a full, active life. What are your kids saving for? Purple eyeshadow and stock in a good mutual fund. New pants, new shoes, and a United States savings fund. I want stock in a Fortune 500 company. Help your kids save for their future and choose to save. Hello and welcome back to GC Conversations. I'm your host, Wendell Staten. Thanks again for joining us today. Back with Kendall Stiles, director of the Give Center. Um, and Kendall, we left off. Let, let's talk about... I want to I want to let folks know out there whether it's uh, our George College students or or our folks in the community a little bit more about us. But but how do I get involved if I'm a student here at Georgia College and I'm watching this program? Mm -hmm. How do I get involved in the gift center? Uh, pretty much, you just come by and see us, and you right. bring your driver's license and your Bobcat card. All right. It'll take about ten or fifteen minutes. You'll do the paperwork, and then we will give you some information. You go back wherever you want to that's a computer and watch about six small vi videos that will talk about confidentiality, right. talk about how to track hours, just the information sure. you need, and then you send us an email that says you're done with that, and then we make a phone call. And we call you and ask you, what are your interests? Do you want to take a leadership role? What student group are you part of? Because, you know, we track all the hours right. and people want to give them to the organizations, which is fine. And right. then from there, we send out the information to the agencies you want to work with. 
Okay, so first of all, uh, physically on campus, mm -hmm. where are you at? Well, until New Year's, okay, but right, right now we're in what's called a large building called Ennis Hall, okay. right behind the Governor's Mansion, right beside the Student Activity Center. All uh, right, and um, not, not knowing when this is going to air, we right. do know beginning spring semester right. 2012, it's, you will be... We will be right behind Chick-fil-A on campus, okay. right in the Maxwell Student Union. Okay, yes. okay, all right, so so right, right uh, downstairs mm -hmm. uh, from the... Under uh, the Max. Under the Max. Yes. And uh, so they, they uh, our students can go in there. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be somebody waiting for them to say, yeah. hey, uh, I want to volunteer. Right. And they say, okay, great. And we just start uh, Let me have your Bobcat card. And your driver's license. Yeah, okay, and if I if they wanted to contact you, you're on the website under mm -hmm. the Give Center. We just are, go to, yeah, under the Give Center, yeah. and then our phone number is 478-445-5700. Okay, now let me let me go another area. Okay. What what if I'm an organization out in town, and okay. I need volunteers? Mm -hmm. Can can I contact you? Yes. You How can. does that work? You do the same thing. You contact. You can do either the phone number, or okay. we also have an email called give. Really simple. G I V E at Georgia or gcsu.edu. Okay. And then pretty much I ask people just to let us know what they're looking for, how many, what time, where they need to go, and then I always try to have a contact information from the agency. Okay. Because the quicker we can get out of the middle, the better it is. Because right. it's not like, well, what time do I have to be there, Kendall? What do I have to wear? And they can talk directly to right. the agency or the organization. Right. Yeah. Well, that's actually, uh, the system here is, is that you literally serve as the conduit mm -hmm. to get our folks who want to volunteer and our folks who need volunteers put them together. and move them together. Exactly. That's, that's a great system. Yeah. yeah. It's and come uh, a long way in 15 I, years, right, yeah. but, but it is, it seems to work. We still have some issues, but it's working really, really well. Yeah. Though. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, how many organizations we serve, uh, how many people are involved, uh, how many hours, all that type of thing. Because this is this is an extraordinary story, yes. uh, and I want folks to hear this okay. and understand the value that this organization has to our community. Right. And, and, and certainly, and let me say this: our folks who volunteer get so much more uh, than what than what they exactly. get. Exactly. Oh, and, anytime. And absolutely, we all right. know that. So, exactly. all right. So, so first of all. How many students approximately on a given year are involved uh, probably, in this? Probably um, between 2,000 and 2,500. Wow. I want to say last year was like 23-something in there. Yeah. Wow. So and it's about our, half of our students. I was going to say, our own campus mm -hmm. population, you're almost at half of that right. on campus. Exactly. That's incredible. Exactly. It tells you a lot about the students right. here at Georgia College. It does. And half of, and one of the things that most people, well, they do and they don't know, half of, or almost a 40% of our hours are done by the Greek organizations on campus. Okay. And that's the fraternities and the sororities. And that's a lot of times the agencies, that'll be the first group they want. Well, I know those fraternities and sororities need hours. Right. And part of my job is, to, yes, they do need hours, but do you realize how much they're already doing? Right, you right, know? yeah. And so, but yeah, so that's about 50% of the population yeah. or the students will get involved with at least one activity. Okay. And then we have some that do up to four and 500 hours, just wow. depending on what they want. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so give me a total... Um, do you know how many organizations we touch typically um, during the year? You know, it depends because we also touch, they don't, they're not all in Baldwin County. Gotcha. You know, because you can also volunteer. We've had people that have gone study abroad that have right. done mission trips. We have lots in Atlanta. Okay. You know, so we don't really limit that they have to do things in Baldwin County. Okay. And so I would say probably on a given year it's between 100 and 200 depending okay. on, you know, where right. people are wanting to go and what sure. they're wanting to work with. Sure. Mm -hmm. And and of these 2,000, 2,500, 2,300 students who right. on campus are doing things, mm -hmm. and approximate hours. Um, I would say it's around 70,000, you wow. know, right there, give or take, depending on the year, mm -hmm, which now, is incredible. I keep thinking we're going to slow down, <laughs> and we haven't yet, which is good, but one day we will probably kind of even out some, you know. And I don't have my man hours. I know for a full-time employee, and, and maybe <laughs> after break we can have, our, it's 2,080 hours, so right. I'm trying to do my quick math. That's a lot of full-time employees That's a lot of full-time employees, yes, yeah. exactly, so. And uh, we have a thing called the, well, we don't, but it's nationally called the independent sector. And they put a value on a volunteer's right. time. And it goes up each year. And so we laugh. We A couple years ago, we hit $20 an hour. And right. so right now, it's about $21.50 somewhere. Okay. And okay. so for all the math majors out there, right. I can fill that calculator <laughs> out. Right. I can't give you the exact figure, but it's almost a million and a half dollars. Yeah. That last year alone, our students actually have saved. When we say our community, right. it could be the bigger community, sure. but a lot of it is local. Sure, and, and, and again, yeah. think about that. That's that's uh, that's human capital right. uh, that is, that is available right here on our campus. That's a, a, a million and a, million and a half dollars impact right. in our local community or the or the service area. Right. So 
that's an incredible amount. And 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 again, I, I want I want all of our I want all of our students out there tell them one more time right. in spring 2012 where you're going to be. In spring of 2012, <laughs> we will be right behind Chick Fil A and under the brand new Max. And all so right. we're excited. Got great new renovations and really looking at doing some exciting things this spring. And and they need to bring their license. They need to bring their driver's license and their Bobcat card and their passion for service. That's all it takes. Great. That's pretty simple. Yeah. And again, phone number. 478-445-5700. All right. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to come back, and, and uh, I know you have a nice banquet at the end of the year, mm -hmm. and you honor some of these folks, yes. and, and you calculate hours, and I know there's things that can go on students' transcripts, right. uh, awards they can get, that type mm -hmm. of thing. And, and I'm just going to guess, too, that a lot of these students end up probably uh, working in that field, certainly, if mm -hmm. not attaching to an organization in particular. Exactly. Uh, that I, I would think say, it depends on their career choice and yeah. if they can, but a lot of them will decide that they want to go into the nonprofit or doing things with that. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, we'll come back with our last segment, talk a little bit more about the Gift Center. Okay. All right. So, again, thanks for joining us here on GC Conversations. We'll be right back with Kendall Stiles, director of the Gift Center here at Georgia College. From Maine to Maui, thousands of high school students across the country are getting in on the action by volunteering in their communities. It's great helping others, and it feels good too. Are you in? Whoa! Anyone can do it. All it takes is a little time. Are you in? Action teams of high school students are joining Volunteers of America and Major League Baseball players to help train and inspire the next generation of volunteers. It's easy to start an action team at your school, so you too can get in on the action. Are you in? Get in on the action at actionteam.org. For others, it may have just been a summer job. But for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescueman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today, and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Welcome back to GC Conversations. I'm your host, Wendell Staten. Again, we're joined by Kendall Stiles, director of the Give Center. And Kendall, we left off um, talking again, letting our students know how they could get involved yep. and go find you in spring of 2012 at your new home. Exactly. And Because uh, you've been in Ennis Hall for how long? We've been in Ennis Hall. Yeah, yeah. No, not ever <laughs> since. We started Action MSU. When I met Kate, we were in MSU okay. right behind Chick-fil-A. Oh, okay. So we're doing a full circle. <laughs> and so we actually went over to Ennis, and then now we're going back to MSU. Okay. So very excited. Okay. All right. And what kind of staff do you have over there? So, well, we actually have a fairly large staff. Yeah. Most people don't even realize. Yeah. We have um, Paul Cedor, who was a student. He's the assistant director. Okay. And then Doris Henderson's our administrative assistant. Okay. And then Eve Puckett is a liaison between the Gift Center, athletics, right. as well as ha or really with housing, and then she helps with athletics right. as well. And then we have three graduate assistants. Okay. And then we have nine student staff. Okay, good. And so it's a lot of it student, you know, staff, but they really make us all run. Yeah. And so, yeah, because there's no way I can do it by myself. Well, there's all kinds of energy whenever you go over there and somebody's always waiting to greet you and, and, right. and help you uh, to put my passion in, 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 in the play. Exactly, so, and that's yeah. our goal is to get you connected to what you want to do. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, maybe an organization uh, uh, that, that, that we could just kind of showcase today for okay. this show. And, and we were talking off the, uh, off the air just a minute ago about A.D. Pye, mm -hmm. and they're involved uh, right. with the Ron McDonald House. Kind of, right. And you said it, kind of, I'm just let you talk about okay. that. Okay, yeah, with Alpha Delta Pi, their national philanthropy is the Ronald McDonald House. Mm -hmm. And so we now have one in Macon. We didn't for a while, so a lot of what they did was more in Augusta and Savannah and Atlanta area. And we have one there. And they have partnered up with Oconee Prevention Resource Council. Okay. And what we have done, and they've done it during Red Ribbon Week, and they get people to, that the schools to wear the little red ribbons with the pop tops. Right. And so Ronald McDonald collects the pop tops. And people ask, why just the pop tops? That's where the most aluminum is in the can. Oh, okay. They will collect 
collect about one. Out, it's kind of sad. They only collect about three out of every hundred. Right. And they will raise about $50,000 a month for electricity across the nation. Okay. And so ADP has partnered with Oconee Prevention Resource Council, and we had now going to the schools during okay. Red Ribbon, and they collect the pop tops, and then each quarter, the class that collects the most gets Happy Meals. Okay. And the ADP will go in there and do that. And then each spring, we take two or three students from each of the local elementary schools, and we actually take them to our local Ronald McDonald House okay. with the ADP to really let them see where those pop tops go and what they're doing. And so they get to meet some of the children and the families. And, that. and then, of course, we have to go to McDonald's right, to finish right. it off. Yeah. But yeah. it's just a great way to kind of do the full circle sure. of what yeah. these, what our children, you know, not just our college students, but right. what our children are doing in our community too. Yeah. And how long has this partnership been? This one probably. is probably, this one's probably close to 14 years. Okay. This was probably, this is definitely our strongest and oldest one that has continued to grow. And okay. Grow. Yeah, and we've had other communities want to know how they could do it. And so right. it's been definitely a program of excellence. Yes. I'm going to go on a, <clears throat> a little bit of a personal note here because uh, this past weekend, again, I'm not sure when this is going to air, but uh, I ran in a, in a race the other exactly. night for diabetes. And mm -hmm. tell me, let, let's just start with that. How did that get started and what group did it? Well, it was Gamma Sigma Sigma, which is the National Service Sorority. And okay. they're front of their, they changed their impact areas every two years. Okay. And diabetes is there. And so they thought, well, we'll have a race. Right. Well, I think once they got into it, it's a little more than we'll have a race. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing that was so neat is that they weren't working directly with the agency that was planning the race. And they just assisted. They were planning the race yeah. and working just a little bit with the agency to get the educational and the awareness. Yeah. And so they really did it from start to scratch. I mean, from scratch to finish yeah. and had all the different logistics and they did well. I want to say that when they took out all their expenses, yeah. it was about $1,200. Yeah, they did that a great job. Give to the Diabetes Foundation and people had a great time. Yeah. They had over 100 people register and had games yeah. and activities. So I think they were very proud of themselves and I was very proud of them. Well, one thing so, I noticed with that is that was, and, and I participated in it, but there was just, just a nice community event, mm -hmm. a nice community feel to it. Exactly. Uh, again, you come on our campus, and there's community members there, there's students there. It was just, it was a lot of energy. We had a, we had a, uh, a school age uh, kids uh, exactly. uh, playing some Play music, some drums, and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of different folks got involved. But again, all this really started mm -hmm. through your place, and and right. and saying. We want to do something. We want to do something, exactly. Yeah. And well, and part of our job, or my job, is to really get the community, the faculty, the staff, and the students. Almost every event we do yeah. is not just for students. Now, yeah. if a group wants to do something just for their new members, right. we support that. But if it's pretty much an event that's on the calendar and I volunteer with OrgSync, pretty much anybody and everybody can participate in right. it. Right, gotcha. Yeah, because it yeah. kind of takes us out. It's like build, it takes a village to help right. a person. Yeah. It's the yeah. same kind of concept. It takes a village or a community to make this community work. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, um, you have a nice banquet every mm -hmm. year. We do. T tell us about that. We uh, It's part of a national program called the National President's Volunteer Service Award. We're mm -hmm. not the only one that does it, but we're a certified agent. And it's for individuals that do a minimum of 100 hours within 12 months. And okay. so we have decided that we run our hours from January to December. Mm -hmm. And if you do at least 100, then you'll get invited to the, um, the ceremony. And you can also go up to more than 250 because it has the bronze, silver, and gold. So right. you can go at different levels. We have our president there, our vice presidents, our deans, right. uh, individuals like yourself, yeah. anyone that's kind of over areas that are doing yeah. service as well as our community partners. And the last couple of years, we've even extended this out to our local high schools. Okay. And so last yeah. year we had about, yeah, and so we're also that. working with them to get them involved. And so, uh, and so we used, last year we had about 165 individuals that earned the award. Mm -hmm. Probably about 120 came to the ceremony okay. and yeah. also, but it's a wonderful event. And the, I think the neatest thing about this one too is if you actually actually earn the presidential, you actually will get a graduation medallion, okay. depending on the level that right. you win the award. And last year, Dr. Leland uh, yeah. actually presented that award, and this year, Stosh will do right. that. And then they'll actually get to be recognized and wear that at graduation. Okay. So it really is a really is a big deal what you're doing here on our campus. So in, in addition to the the, the, the giving there there are some uh, uh, some areas too where, where mm -hmm. for recognition this being one exactly uh, I know oh, oh, is there a transcript thing there where, is okay, we have the that. experiential transcript which is university wide and we're part of that and so all the hours that they track in the give center and putting those little gray boxes right. and things they all go on the experiential transcript and then we can also run their service hours like for internship and for graduate school and those kind of things we can right. actually run just if they just wanted their service hours okay but we everything is entered in to their experiential transcript, yes, okay, okay. which includes about seven different areas. We're just one of those areas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tell me also about the, um, uh, you've got an event coming up in March, in the spring. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, we're hosting. We so are hosting. Tell, tell it's the that. first annual, and it's actually called the. It's not really the Give Conference, but it's Give as an acronym. It's called Georgia Inspiring Volunteers to Engage. Right. And it will be, and we're hosting that on March first, right here in Student Activities in Magnolia, Maple, and Dogwood. And we're hoping to have between 200 and 300, uh, mainly students from across the state, but also people that do things like I do and that Paul does right. that works with them. But it's more focused on out of the classroom volunteerism. Yeah. And so they're going to come and learn from other students, and so. They're they're going to connect with them and learn and then hopefully go back and take things that we're doing here as well as other people across the state are doing and hopefully we'll learn something right. new too because we're not the pros we've right. just been we think we do a good job but yeah. we can always grow and improve yeah. kendall thanks for joining us today fantastic Thank you so much. really enjoyed it Thank really you. enjoyed it so Appreciate again it. kendall style at the gift centers folks come by and utilize her whether you're in the community or, or a student on campus great program Seventy thousand hours of volunteer hours here in our community for Kendall Styles, I'm Wendell Staten. Thanks for joining us on GC Conversations.